Welcome to the series for Swift UI Essentials, where we are going to build one more complex project together. In the series, you will see a lot of very important topics, essential topics when building iOS apps with Swift UI. And a lot of these get much clearer only when you build them in a real app and see how things are working together. Now, let me show you what you're going to build. This is an iOS app where I can also show this for the iPad. On this case, I'm using a navigation split view. In the first screen, I show a list of items. I can add one more in this sheet. I can give this a name, paste a URL and then add this. I have this item here in my list and we can tap. This is then opening the detail view where I am opening this web page. SwiftUI doesn't have a native view to do this. So we need to drop down to UI kit and you will see how to bridge between UI kit and SwiftUI. The main challenge is the data handling, the data flow. When I navigate to another view, now here, I want to know in my menu that uh, this is a different page than the initial one. And here I can add a button saying add as new reading. I added this as a new page with the title of this new reading item. And when I go here, this is opening again, this page. I want to know what's happening when the user interacts with this website. This is all done in WebKit, in UIKit, and you will learn about UI Viewer Presentable. Then another important part for this kind of apps is that I actually want to be able to save the user input to disk. When I close my app and I come back later, the user expects that the data is still there. We need to store this user input locally. For this, you need to know how to model your data, work with Codable, which makes it easier for storing files, a little bit about file handling, URLs, where to store this. But also, when should I actually save this information? I definitely need to store everything before I leave my app. So how do you save it when the user leaves? For example, when I closed it and when I relaunch my app, I need to load the data from this file. This is specific user input that we need to put into the app's storage. Whereas, for example, you might want to, for one of these pages here, export these as a PDF. This is saving it so that if I go to the finder, to the files app, I have one more folder for my app where I also have these one PDF that we just stored. So these PDFs are accessible from the finder app, but we can also show them in our own app. Here I have another section in this list with the saved PDFs. This is this one new PDF that I have here. First, we need to actually check when I show this section, I need to look into this directory where we stored these PDFs, read all the files and then show them here. How do we access this directory and get this information working with file manager in this case. And then if I hit tab here and go to the detail, we need to work on how to implement this PDF viewer, which is quite straightforward. Again, we need to go to UI kit. So create a UI viewer presentable wrapper around this. I added here some other functionality. For example, I added here share link. This is in the simulator. You don't see this fully, but on your real device, there would be, for example, airdrop. So you can send it to another device or you can save it to files, print or mark markup. Additionally, I added here the delete button. When I press this delete button, I need to update this list. But I also need to delete this PDF. So let's just check if I actually deleted this. And you'll see in, when I open the Finder app, I actually deleted this. In this project, you need to work a lot with files, different locations, directories. This is a very good example to get the hang of all of these. In addition, I also show you how to organize your project. And I'm using a lot of MVVM. So I will explain why I put certain code in certain locations, how I structured it why I use this class. And in this case, I'm going to uh, take advantage of a newer feature, which is the observation feature that makes it a little bit easier with the data handling and updating and makes it also more efficient. I hope you're going to join me in building this app to learn about SwiftUI essentials with this hands-on project-oriented mini-series for SwiftUI.